Thank you Baiyi for sponsoring this video, stick around to the end to find out more. So last year I made a video wonder trading a thousand Pokemon. And because that video got over a million views, I mean because I had so much fun making that video, I decided I was gonna do another one when the Sinnoh remix came out. So when I got to Jubilife City and my copy of Shining Pearl, I could already see the beautiful building where I was going to do many a wonder trade and meh, JK, sorry it's not ready yet. Excuse me? And what can I say? This put me off the whole game. What was the point of going on if I couldn't wonder trade? And so, Shining Pearl collected dust on my Switch menu for many weeks. It only took them four months, but in March they finally put Wonder Trade into BDSP. And you know what that means. It's time for me to self-promote. I mean, it's time to Wonder Trade a thousand Pokemon again. So in my last video, I Wonder Traded a bunch of Magnemite. I'm not explaining why it has to be Magnemite. If you want to know, you're going to have to watch my other video. I'm not explaining it again. Magnemite happens to be in the Sinnoh deck, so I knew it was meant to be. But then it dawned on me. How far into the game can you even get Magnemite? Okay, you can get it at Fuego Ironworks. This is good. Wait, it's a swarm Pokemon. Meaning post-game. Oh no. There's gotta be another way. Cerebi tells me I can get it in the underground, but apparently it's a respawn during the main game, which isn't ideal because I need a thousand of them. I'm being punished for not playing the game. I'm sorry, I was too busy hunting for a shiny Turtwig. I spent like a hundred hours doing that and then I just didn't play the game. I made a pretty sweet video though, not gonna lie. I need Magnemite, there has to be another option. I could breed them. That could work. But I'll need a ditto as well, and guess what? That's post-game too, baby! I could transfer them from another game. Nope, guess what? At the time I was doing this, BDSP still wasn't compatible with home. I'm running out of options. I think I'm gonna have to... Ask for help! I crawled to my friend PD Winnell's DMs and begged for his help. I have a favour to ask. Do you have a foreign ditto in BDSP? Can I have it now? No. I jest, he said he'd help me. I then realized another obstacle in my path. Oh yeah, you kind of have to be at Salacion Town to breed anything. How far am I? Eterna, nice. I still have Gardenia to beat. And then on the road to Heart Home City in Salacion Town, I dodged every trainer I possibly could. I may have said a few choice words to the ones that spotted me. I am taking this personally. But eventually I managed to get to Salacion Town. All I need now is everything else. PD Winnell came in and saved the day, giving me his playthrough Magnazone, a French dish on a slugma because fire slug make eggs hatch faster. I was using a French ditto because obviously I wanted to do Masuda method and get a shiny. Even though I was using methods that would increase the odds, I still didn't find a single shiny out of the 1000 Magnemite in the last video, so there were wrongs that needed to be righted. Without a shiny charm, the odds for Masuda method and BDSP are 1 out of 692, and with 1000 little magnets to hatch, I was sure I could find at least one shiny. So I calculated that it would take me roughly 40 minutes to hatch one box of eggs. I feel very blessed. I actually did a lot of Masuda hunting back in X and Y, and you used to have to go to the Pokemon Center every single time to switch eggs, but not anymore. You could just do it anywhere. Kids these days have it easy. So 40 minutes per box, and I need 33 and a bit boxes, which will take me around 22 hours in total. Would it be faster to catch them in the wild? Probably, but I was still a good 10 or 15 hours away from finishing the game and getting swarmed, so it was actually faster for me to just stay where I was and hatch eggs. I am learning my lesson. When new Pokemon game comes out, next time I will actually play it and not spend 100 hours shiny hunting. Probably. But I am a master of efficiency. I streamed about 15 hours of the egg hatching on my Twitch. I was about 10 boxes in and growing tired when it finally happened. At last I had a shiny, it's all been worthwhile. I'm not one to trading this one, you can't have him, he's mine! I then had to leave because Pokemon invited me to the Liverpool Regional Championships. And I am a Pokemon YouTuber. When Pokemon invites you to something, you don't say no. <laughs> Thank you, Pokemon. Love you very much. 
but I'm a multitasker. I took my Switch with me. Whenever I got a spare minute at that event, I was hatching eggs. In the restaurant, hatching eggs. In the hotel, hatching eggs. In the train station, hatching eggs. I got quite ill a day in. Yes, I want sympathy. But even in the walk-in center waiting room, I was still hatching eggs. The event itself was very fun. I got to go to a little pre-release event and play with some of the cards from the new set. Look at the cool cards I got. Whoa, I got an Agron V, this full art Umbreon, and a Rainbow Man. I thought I had a decent grasp on the game, but with COVID, it had been a good three years since I played it, so I'd forgotten most of it. But the Pokemon professor there helped me, and within no time, I had mastered the game once again. I played Pick a Pack, which is where you open one pack and battle with it, and I actually didn't lose all of my matches. Wow! It had been so long since I'd been to any kind of event, so it was just really fun fun to see the community. I am quite spoiled. Worlds is going to be in the UK this year and I am very excited. It may be too late for me to compete, which is probably for the best because I'm too powerful. I just beat everyone there. Want to give a big thank you to the Pokemon company for letting me come along once again. Love you. So I got home, I hatched the last of my Magnemites and then I was ready. I was not ready. I had to appropriately nickname all of them YT Candy Eevee. Hey, I'm just playing the game. I gotta get my clicks from somewhere. You can actually nickname Pokemon in the boxes now, which is a very useful feature, so I didn't think it would take that long. How long could it take to nickname a thousand Pokemon? Six hours. I'm 28 hours in and I haven't even wonder traded a single Pokemon yet. I better get at least a hundred new subs when I send these out. So I started trading and once again the messages started to come in. My master plan was working. On a side note, ever since I released that first wonder trade video, I would occasionally get messages from people very excited that they'd received a YT Candy Eevee Pokemon. Not even a Magnemite, just random Pokemon with my name on it. Imposters. Like, I ain't complaining, I encourage this, you're doing my job for me, promote me, please! But I never have the heart to reply to these people like, nah, son, that ain't me. Many a day passed, but in time, all 1000 Magnemite found new homes across the globe. Most of them found new homes across the globe. Another nine of them got sent back to me, which again, it's just a shame. Some people just don't appreciate the true value of the YT Candy Eevee Magnemite. Truly, their loss. It would have been nice not having to wait four months for it, but I love BDSP's Wonder Trade. I think it's the best out of any game it's been in. It combines the regular Wonder Trading system with upgraded features first seen in Diamond and Pearl. While the GTS itself isn't in BDSP, they brought back a revamped version of the globe just for Wonder Trading and I like it. But what sort of Pokemon did I get? Well, this video is going to be fairly different to the last one for one reason. At the time I did the trades back in April, BDSP still didn't have home connectivity. So at that time, BDSP could only communicate with other copies of BDSP. So what that means is that every Pokemon would have to have originated from within these games. A pretty stark contrast to when I was doing Wonder Trades in Sword and Shield. It was crazy, sometimes I would get multiple hacked shinies in one box. But this time, I don't think that I got a single hacked Pokemon. Pokemon, which is bizarre. Not a single shiny, no level 100s whatsoever. On the one hand, it was nice because it made it feel like an authentic experience where I was actually trading with real people instead of random hacked bots, but in an odd way, I almost missed them. There's something special about going on Wonder Trade and getting three hacked shiny Machamps promoting some random website. But with a thousand trades, I was still bound to get some interesting stuff, so let's have a look at the highlights. I always love getting nicknamed Pokemon because it just gives them a lot more personality. Like I got traded 16 Pachirisu over a thousand trades, but only one of them was named Pebble. Pebble's special. I got an Oreodos named Mr. Spooda, a Glalie named Ice Cream, the exclamation point is very important, a Geodude named Ratman, a Cricketoo named Mr. Smiley, an Onyx named Dwayne, a Cricketot named Tater Tot, Forced Labor the Bidoof, and of course, it wouldn't be Wonder Trade if I didn't get a Pokemon with a nickname that's just the letter A. Except this time it actually makes sense because it's unknown A. I didn't get as many evolved Pokemon this time, but it really made the ones that I did get stand out more. Like some random person sent a Garchomp that they'd raised from an egg, which was nice. But are you sure you want to give me this? Can I 
have it back if you want. I got a Bastiodon. on. Someone even gave me a Crobat. Like, dude, that's a friendship evolution. Those take ages. Why would you put them on Wonder Trade? There were quite a few do-gooders trading out stuff like Kadabra and Haunter for the evolutions. I'm telling you, kids have it easy these days. I didn't have Wi-Fi or friends, so little Lucy got no trade evolutions. I want to take a page out of Mindy's book chaotic wonder trading. Just gather up a bunch of Haunter and give them Everstones and then send them out into the world. I don't really get how the trades work in this game. It was strange. There were quite a few times where I would get the same Pokemon from the same person twice in a row and then never again. I got three Pokemon with Pokerus. One of them was this Butterfree named Flutter. I like him a lot. But let's get into the best part of the video, the stats. So not only do we have four regions worth of Pokemon this time, but BDSP actually has restrictions on what Pokemon you can trade. No legendary or mythical Pokemon allowed, so I'm not going to be counting them in my stats because you can't get them anyway. So big shock, the region I got the most Pokemon from was Sinnoh. I got 429 Sinnoh Pokemon, or a rate of 1 in every 2.3 trades. Next was Kanto with 283 Pokemon, or a rate of 1 in every 3.5 trades. Hoenn was next with 149, with a rate of 1 in 6.7 trades. And the rarest region was Johto with 139, a rate of around 1 in every 7.2 trades. But again, higher rates didn't translate to more dex entries. In terms of dex completion, Sinnoh was the highest at 48% complete, but Kanto was barely behind at 47% and got a lot more in terms of actual dex entries because it has a much bigger Pokedex. I did technically get far more Sinnoh Pokemon, but most of them were Route 1 stuff. That and a really big chunk of the Sinnoh decks are these awkward to get evolutions, which you probably aren't going to find floating around Wonder Trade. For reference, there are 22 of these and I got one. But next is Johto, which by the end was 44% complete, and then Hoenn which I managed to get to 40%. So for the entire Sinnoh National decks, excluding legendaries, I managed to get 204 out of 457 Pokemon, or 45% completed decks, which I think is pretty solid. But I'm just getting started with stats. Top 5 Pokemon for each region. So for Kanto, the king of my last Wonder Trade video makes a return. Magikarp wins Kanto at 25 trades. Then just behind is Geodude with 24, then Zubat with 21. Ditto at 15, and Joint 5th at Eevee and Magnemite at 14. I don't know how much it counts though because 9 of those Magnemite were just my ones that got traded back to me. For Johto, the winner is Wooper at 20 trades, then Hootoot at 10, Gligar at 9, Unown at 8, and last is Larvitar at 7 trades. Hoenn's actually surprised me quite a bit. First is Feebas at 15 trades, then Bagon at 11, Meditite at 10, Ralts at 9, and Joint 5th are Wingle and Torchic at 7 trades. Wormple didn't even make the top 5, I don't know what's going on. And Vicino is just a mess of Route 1 Pokemon. In first place is Bidoof with 72 trades, second place is Starly with 69, then Shinx with 53, Budu with 27, and then Gibble with 23. The top 5 traded Pokemon overall is only one place different, with Gibble being swapped out for Magikarp. I just got that many Route 1 Pokemon. In fact, the top 5 traded Pokemon make up 246 trades, which is 8 boxes or around 1 in every 4 trades being something from the top 5. I was in a lot of pain. But you know what, I feel like we haven't had enough stats in this video, so I need more, more stats. I decided this time I wanted to make some stats for what regions Pokemon were coming from. I always used to get so excited as a kid getting the different points on the globe, and this is just that, but better. It keeps a record of what Pokemon you traded for each point, so eventually, you'll get this really cool visual. My brain likes it very much. I kind of wish that it told you where the different points are, but maybe they don't do that for privacy reasons, I don't know. Like, you dare trade me a Starly, I'll show up to your house, you won't be doing it again. So with it not actually telling you what countries you've hit, you kind of just have to guess. I like to think I'm quite good at geography though, so this'll be fun! Okay, so we got one from France, one from America. I was only one box in when I got a trade from Antarctica. Look, you don't know, it could be legitimate. Maybe there's a researcher in Antarctica, and after a long, cold day of researching, the way that they wind down is to do some wonder trades in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Who are we to judge? I kept records of the different points, but I also tried not to take it too seriously. It keeps a record of the region of the person who traded with you, but looking at my Japanese points, a pretty sizable amount of them aren't even Japanese. Like, a lot of them. I don't get it. And then I realized that it's all a lie. The points that you register are actually based on what each person chooses before the trade and has nothing to do with your actual location at all. But my statistics, I need my statistics. 
So probably the more accurate way for me to track regions is to go by the languages of the actual Pokemon I got traded. So I scanned through all 1000 Pokemon and took note of their languages. It took me many hours, you had better appreciate this. I sacrificed myself for the sake of this scientific endeavor. So Pokemon is available in 9 languages. Guess which one's top? Yeah, it's English, no surprise. English language Pokemon accounted for more than half of all the trades I got, at 54.6% or around 1 in every one. Point eight trades. Second place is Japan. Still quite a lot, but not as much as I expected. 20.7% or around 1 in every 4.8 trades. Third place was German at 10.3% or 1 in every 9.7 trades. Fourth is French at 4.4% or 1 in every 22.7 trades. Fifth was Spanish with a share of 3.9% or 1 in every 25.6 trades. The newest languages Chinese Simplified and Chinese Traditional got similar amounts, 2.5% and 1.8%. So 1 in every 40 and 55 5.5 trades. And now we're getting into the really tiny numbers. Korean language Pokemon made up 1.1% of the total, or around 1 in every 90.9 trades. And the rarest language Pokemon you can get on Wonder Trade is Italian. 0.7% of the Pokemon I got were Italian, or 1 in every 142.9 trades. These numbers aren't going to be completely perfect because obviously I was trading within my UK time zone. I feel like the only way you'd be able to get a perfect image is if you just traded Pokemon for 24 hours hours straight, or if Pokemon just published the stats, that would work too, would be nice. But I still wasn't done wonder trading. I got a lot of people asking me if I was going to do any of the wonder trades on my live stream, and I didn't really know what to do. On the one hand, if I have to spend a good 15 hours wonder trading all these Magnemite, as a content creator, the smart thing to do would be to stream it. But there's just one problem. I don't trust you. I knew that if I streamed it, then you, lovely viewers, would ruin it. I knew I wouldn't get my accurate statistics because a bunch of people on my stream would start trading me whack stuff so that they could get into in my video. I wanted to prove a point, so I decided that I'd do a hundred more Magnemite, but this time I would livestream it. I already have my stats to compare against, so let's see what happens. There's also another factor I didn't take into account that shakes up things even more. So I did the initial thousand trades before Pokemon Home was available for BDSP, but by the time of my livestream it was. So this means that the Pokemon being Wonder Traded can come from pretty much anywhere, including Legends Arceus. So I started the Wonder Trades and my theory was correct. I started getting matched with people from my livestream almost immediately. I actually did get a lot more interesting stuff in these 100 trades, I would assume because of Pokemon Home. Remember how I said I didn't get a single shiny in the 1000 I did off stream? Well, in 100 trades, I got two shinies. First one was an Eevee that was definitely meant for me. Then I got a shiny Azuril which says it's from Sun and Moon which is a bit weird. Probably hacked, but I'm choosing to believe that it's not. I also got a Pikachu called Piper from Sword and Shield, one from Pokemon Go, and one that came all the way from black and white, which is pretty whack. There were also a few Pokemon that came from Legends Arceus. You can tell this because they all come in my new favorite Pokeball, the Strange Ball. Is this not the most aesthetic Pokeball you've ever seen in your life? It is nice. But you've all been very patient. I know you've been waiting for the best part. The stars. So in terms of what regions Pokemon come from, it really wasn't that different to the first group I did. Just a few more Johto and Hoenn Pokemon. I can't even do a top 5 because 100 trades is just nowhere near big enough of a sample to do that. But the Pokemon I got the most of were Starly and Shinx, each at 6 trades, which is about what I expected. Where the stats get really weird is what language Pokemon I got. So I was quite surprised that I actually managed to get at least one Pokemon for every single language, except Chinese Simplified. So close. I expected to mostly get English language Pokemon, but while the group of 1000 got a little over 50%, in the group of 100 it was over 80%, and Japan went from 20% to just 2%. But Pokemon's Japanese, how could it only be 2%? So when I did the first 1000 trades, I didn't have a specific time of day that I'd do them. Sometimes I'd trade in the afternoon, sometimes I'd trade at 3am. It was kind of all over the place. Which in a way probably made my stats more accurate than if I'd done it at a specific time of day. But for the live stream, I only had a 2 hour window after a around 10pm UK time. So for all the Americans, that's late afternoon, but it's super early morning for Japan. Who's gonna be awake at 6am in Japan doing wonder trades? So what have I learned from repeating this ordeal again? Not much. Will I do it again? Probably. I already saw that there's a Magnemite in the Scarlet and Violet trailer, so I'm preparing myself to have to do this all over again. Actually, no, tell a lie. I think I have learned something. 
can't believe that I didn't think of this last time, but having over a thousand Pokemon with different ID numbers can have its benefits. Benefits being that the Lotto Corner is busted and I get a prize every time, I'm winning! Hey, thanks for watching the video and thanks to Bai for sponsoring the video! Do you like Pokemon? I'd assume you do because you just watched a 20 minute video on it. Well, me too! But tragically, most of the cool Pokemon merchandise is locked away in Japan. This purse, Japan only. This cute little mug, Japan only. These little Lucario socks, Japan only. But that's where Bai comes in. They're a proxy buying service that allow you to get the cool stuff without having to live in Japan. They can ship those precious little sockies for you! You can use Bayi on tons of sites including Rakuten, Yahoo Shopping, Yahoo Auctions, of course Pokemon Center, and many others. And if you use my link in the description you can get a first time order coupon of 2000 yen. Massive massive thank you to Bayi for sponsoring this video.